What is going on everyone? Jelly from a huge disaster here and today we ask the question is Wizard of Legend a huge disaster? So to start it off, what is Wizard of Legend and who is behind it? Wizard of Legend is a fast paced, action packed, dungeon crawling kind of game that really emphasizes on precise movements and combining of over a hundred unique spells and relics. And for this, we can thank the two person dev team, Contingent99 for this little gem of a game. So to give you a rough idea of what the gameplay is all about, basically, like I said before, it's a bit of a dungeon crawl with spells and relics. Now, the aim of the game is to get through these trials. And at the moment, it's broken down into three worlds or zones, I guess you could say, fire, frost, and earth, with each zone containing two stages, then a boss battle at the very end. The challenge is to get through all three without dying, because once you die, that's it, game over. Kind of, I mean, you're back to the start where you can, you know, redo your build and all that. But in saying that, don't go back into the same stages thinking that it's going to be exactly the same because it is randomly generated. So everything from the enemies to the vendors you come across and what they sell in each stage is going to be different. Now, the more you go through it, the more you're going to fail because you, there's no way in hell that you're going to clear it first time unless you're just some kind of absolute legend. But each time you fail, you're going to come back with a bunch of gems that you've collected from killing, you know, bosses and opening loots and all that kind of stuff. Now, with these gems, you use them to purchase relics, spells and uh, outfits or cloaks, I guess you could say, which basically enhance your magic abilities or give you these nice little buffs or increase your stats in case of the outfits. So really with this list with over 100 relics and hundreds of spells or over 100 relics and 100 spells, and the outfits as well, you can really, you can do a build however you want. So really the possibilities are almost endless. You could really just go and go all out and do all kinds of things. And obviously as you start, you're gonna have a very limited amount of moves and that, but you can keep buying new moves and do new things. And it is really cool. Whatever suits you, there's a style for you. So first impressions of the game, what did I think? Well, I didn't really think much. I went into Wizard of Legend knowing basically next to nothing. I was just scrolling through the Steam summer sales, looking for something to dive into when this caught my eye. It was the art style and overall look at the spells and the fast paced combat that really just looked good enough for me to just buy it then and there. And this is coming from someone who struggles to even spend $2 on a sausage roll because I am tighter than a nun's So I knew very little besides how it played or so I thought. As you enter the game, you go through this tutorial zone that introduces you into the lore and just basic gameplay. And at first I thought this was pretty cool, but if you're like me and you want to explore everything and talk to all the people of fear of missing out on something, it can get pretty damn annoying by the end. But hey, that's just me. After that, you find yourself in your new home with some pretty amusingly named characters. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Tommy and I'll be cataloging all the arcana you come across. Because you're a tome, I totally get it. And shortly after that, you're in like, I guess, the hub city where you go talk to a bunch of more random NPCs and purchase new spells, relics, cloaks, and all that kind of stuff before jumping into the trials. This is when I come across the first thing that I really wasn't a fan of in this hub world was when you're looking at the shops and you're looking at the items, there's no inspect option. You, you can't inspect what you're purchasing. So gems, which is the main currency isn't something that you really come by in huge amounts and spending them on relics and cloaks that have different effects can be a real problem when you have no freaking idea what the effect will do and what you'll gain from them. So I found that a little bit hard, especially when relics give you certain powers or passive abilities while cloaks can give you increased damage or armor and just all round stats sort of stuff. For example, it's going to be pretty damn sucky if you wanted to make a fire build, but you got your hands on something that's going to increase frost damage. It's just not ideal. Deal. But other than that, the overall area was compact enough that you didn't feel like it was taking forever to go from shop to shop just to waste your time and make you feel like you're spending more time in the game. But at the same time, it wasn't too small that you just feel boxed in and like in a tight little, I don't know, bedroom or something. But once I went through and spent my gems on God knows what and I jumped into the trials and even though I sucked ass, I freaking loved it. The combat is exactly what they say it is, fast paced, dashing around to avoid stuff and interrupt Interrupting casts from enemies is super important because it can be a very unforgiving and hard game at first. I mean, my biggest challenge was just getting over some of the goddamn gaps in the maps. Okay, that's not a good start. Now that was just my first impressions of the game. After a few hours, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna bullshit ya. After about one and a half, two hours of gameplay, I started to think, what's the point? Because 
it's the same thing over and over. There's only three, I guess, areas with two stages in each area and one boss. So three bosses. I mean, is it really worth that $15 price tag even on the sale? So I went, I made lunch because clearly I was hungry. But after a while, all I could think of was just jumping back in and finishing those trials, trying new builds and I don't know, just doing a little bit more, getting back in there. So I did. And once I really looked into the hundreds of builds that you could make through spells and relics and my eyes sort of opened up and I really saw the depth in this game and, and it's hooked, I, it hooked me. I wanted to do more. I wanted to unlock more spells and try new things. But still I had that, that feeling like, you know, is there gonna be more? Is there something after you finish the trials or will there be new things coming out? Because it's only a fresh game. It's only been out, it's a two man dev team. So I couldn't be too harsh on, you know, what else there was gonna be, but I'm pretty sure there will be more. So let's talk about the pros and cons. First off, pros, the art style. It's beautiful, I love it. It's old school, but updated. It's right up my alley. I couldn't go past it. Yeah, just really great to look at. It's pleasing on the eyes. It's fast paced, well polished combat system. You cannot go past it with all the different spells and all the different animations for what there are and including the relics and things that show up on your character and the outfits. It, it really is just a well polished combat system and it's really in depth with all the uh, builds that you can do. I mean, the hundreds of spells, again, spells, relics, outfits, there's so much to work with. They've really nailed that part of the game. And another pro, no stage is the same. There's always a challenge in it. So the stages are constantly changing. It's never gonna be, oh yeah, this part, or oh yeah, that part. I mean, the boss fights, yeah, that's the same, but you just, it's always mixed up. So that is the biggest challenge right there. And I love it, it worked really well for this kind of game. At first I was a bit like, oh, you know, that craps. I mean, dying, yeah, but anyway. Now let's talk about the cons. The number one, dying, that really gets you. When you die and you lose all your coins and you're just back at your little home thing and you've got just whatever gems, it kind of sucks. Cause then it's just like, now you've got to go back in there and do the same stuff you've already done. And yes, like I said, it is always a challenge and the stages are a little bit different, which is a pro, but it just, I don't know, it kind of hurts. It kind of sucks that you've just lost it all. There's no, I guess, progression and it's just challenging yourself to keep going. And some people might like that, but for me, I just, I don't know, I, dying just, it, it sucked. It really sucked. And when I say dying, I don't just mean dying because every game you're going to probably die, but it's just the feeling of losing everything that you've gathered besides your gems throughout the adventure and the things that you've bought in those trials are all gone and then you start, yeah, with them nothing again. So it's a bit of a grind. Getting the gems to buy new spells and new relics to go in there and make new builds um, before you enter the trials is a grind. You don't go come across that many um, gems and there is a lot of spells to buy. So if you're a bit of a collect them all kind of person, that's where the grind's gonna get you. It does feel a bit grindy. And on top of that, also it can get very repetitive. Even though it does change, it's still the same sort of things. You're looking at the same guys until you go into like from earth to frost uh, zones. It does just, it's it's the same things, you know, dodge this, hit that. It, it's just a sort of repetitive kind of uh, game. And the big one, the big one that really annoys me is like I said before, you can't inspect things. Oh, it just, being able to go to a shop and be like, hmm, what am I gonna buy? What does this do? Is so much better than just looking at a picture and having no idea or the name of the item and not actually knowing what that item's gonna do. Because like I said, it can be a grind to get these gems and not being able to know what you're gonna buy without you know jumping on Wikipedia or something. That is a big problem that I hope one day that they address. Now, for the big question, is Wizard of Legend a huge disaster? Overall, no, not really at all. Now, if you think about it, especially for a two-man team, this game is really quite impressive and I cannot wait to see if there's more added down the track. Maybe some new worlds to explore after beating the main three, new dungeons, new play styles. I don't know, who knows? They could go anywhere. But look, what it is now, for the price it's at, I do think it's worth it. It is worth checking out, it is worth playing. It is definitely not a huge disaster. I would probably rate it, you know, maybe somewhere around the uh, seven out of 10, you know, it's a good game. I do hope that they continue to support this game, add new things, add new worlds. A bit like, I guess, Hollow Knight, you know, I guess free-ish DLCs because I can really see this game 
being one that takes off and a lot of people come to for, you know, just a chilling out session, nothing too uh, serious, just to kick back with the controller and play. And on that note, speaking of controller, if you do want to play this game on PC, I highly recommend only to do so if you've got a controller because playing with a keyboard and a mouse, I found a bit, it's a bit awkward. I didn't like it that much, but sitting back with the controller, it felt so much better. The movement and getting across the gaps and that it just works a lot better than a keyboard and a mouse. But look, that's just me and that's going to be it for me for now. If you've tried this game, let's have a chat. Jump down in the comments. Is it something that you're thinking of getting, especially while the Steam sale's on? Have you played it before? Does your mate have it? Have they played it? Have you played it together? I forgot to mention, it's got co-op, which is great. And I would really like someone else that I know to get it so I could check it out with them. But have you done that? Have you done co-op? How did you find it? Is it easier? Is it harder? Do people get in the way? I don't know, but let's have a chat about it. I want to hear what you've got to say. And uh, yeah, till next time, everyone, have a good one.